So, when you listen to somebody now in dyads, we're going to do this, watch the kind of movements they make. And if they're making a specific movement as part of a, as they're telling the dream, why not experiment with using that movement as an intervention and working with a dream at that point? Or just using it. Sounds you guys pick up a lot. Parts. When would the Gestalt paradigm of working with parts be especially useful if somebody telling a dream? Here I'm going to tell the uh, I'm going to tell another kind of dream. You know, I had this dream. I was in the mountainside and uh, I was walking up and down the mountainside. And at a specific point, uh, I met an old man on the mountainside and we began to talk. And uh, blah, 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 blah. I went on to tell the rest of the dream. In that section, this whole psychodramatic activity of talking between the parts is an intervention that will work better than anything else there. That, that, that's, that is a spot you might try that. What other kinds of things? Words. How about the use of specific words? A huge bear. What would be an intervention? I say, and I say it three times to you know, I had this dream about a bear and in the dream the bear did this and the bear did that. This bear, this is a wild bear. It's me. Yeah. But what would be a way of using uh, uh, the word, somebody who repeats the same word a lot? You, did, you actually did it without the, the, defining it. Here is a position in, in that particular, this is where the, the uh, analytical word association would be really, might be very helpful. How should I call it? Word association. What do you associate, Arnie? Association. S-O. Mm. Asso. What do you associate to the word bear? What's the first thing that comes into your mind in connection with the word bear? Bear. Who said that? Hair. 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 Uh, now, this is an interesting thing in working with words. The, uh, what is the difference between an association and an alliteration? Does anybody know? Alliteration? There are certain Hair things that... Bear. Yeah. Certain things go on as clang associations. They're just like poetic uh, connections. And, the, and the, uh, there's usually an emo the association is usually an emotional thing and the person like is really disturbed by it. If that's what I associate to the word bear, I might say at this moment, bears. <laughs> there's a black bear that comes through uh, our garden sometimes uh, where we've been. It's scary. I would have to tell you the whole story in there. So there's sounds and movements and the, the dialoguing between parts word associations. What other things frequently come up in dreams? Maybe that's enough to look for just now. Well, there's a lot of symbolism in there, about cards. The symbolism might be, you might catch some of it right here. For example, somebody might associate to something, a mythical thing, and, and the whole mythical dimension to the word comes up then. Uh, Ernie, are you saying something different with word association, or if I ask the question, who in your life reminds you of the bear? Is that, that would be good. Different? That would be wonderful. That's a very creative thing to do. Who in my life reminds me of a bear? I love that. With me, that works right. That's the whole point. That you, ha if we're, if you're sensitive to the feedback you get, then you can really. Who in my life reminds me of a bear? I don't know, but it's such an exciting thing. I feel challenged to tell you. Wait a second. <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's so irrational. I can hardly. It's really irrational. My mother. Really? My mother. <laughs> of course not. But uh, it's weird because I, I have been thinking about my mother. My mother died last year or, uh, uh, suddenly or after after a long disease and stuff like that. But don't wow. There's a lot of stuff in that. Thank you. I'm gonna like. There's lots that we're doing there. Okay. What? Yeah. But yeah. My question is: Is that a different question than the word association? I'm not sure. What no, you it's mean not. You're association. you're using word association now in a very creative way. You're saying word association is uh, what person reminds you of that. You could also say what what happens to you when I say the word bear. Okay. That would be the most <laughs> blank general associating method. But there's all sorts of methods. Why don't you try this? What is, with, where does your feeling? What's that? Fit in, no. yeah. feeling? The 
Okay. Watch this. Where does the where does feeling and proprioception fit in here? What if I tell a dream like this? I said, you know, and at a certain point in, in the dream, uh, something very difficult happened, but I don't know what it was. But then it came fine. In the end, it came out beautifully. Okay? Yeah. That would be, there's a whole feeling intervention there to go back to the person and say, feel, what are you focusing on underneath? And uh, otherwise, if you just apply a program to people's dreaming, it's wonderful and it's useful, it's easier for you, but it rarely gets down to brass tacks rapidly. So why don't you try this with one another? I'd like you to just do this in twos, uh, just a few minutes. I don't want you to go through the whole dream work of just listening and looking closely at somebody telling a dream. And you see if you can identify which of these things are happening and maybe you want to experiment a little bit with asking them to do one of these things at the point where it comes up in the dream. You know what I mean? Go ahead and experiment with it. Oh, it's 5.30 already. Why don't you just do this like about uh, five or 10 minutes a piece? 10 minutes altogether, five minutes a piece. Go ahead and try it with someone. What? <laughs> to keep going with that one. Well, I kind of hate to disturb you, but uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> let's see here. I have to squeeze in before six o'clock, and uh, let's see if I am able to do it, or if it's going to be too much. If I'll get squeezed. Uh, no, I don't want to get squeezed. Uh, I'd like to put them out. I'd like to put them out there. One of them is a work on edges. And what is an edge? Uh, I want to get across the idea of edges and the idea of working with a total process. And I'm going to first introduce this by, I think a lot of you may already know this concept of the edge. And uh, those of you who would like to try to make yourself ill once, I think it sounds funny to say that, but I think a lot of people actually uh, unconsciously are interested in doing that. Knowing how you make yourself sick gives you a chance of reversing that process. And here is and the whole idea around illness and stuff uh, and uh, the theory around illness and psychology and your development is this mysterious thing called the edge. And uh, instead of just talking about it while I'm talking, I'm going to ask you to ask yourself a question about an edge. What is it, ask yourself, what is it that you can almost not do? I mean, you can do it. In fact, you may already do it a little bit. But you're not doing it quite, and you're not doing it all the time. And you'd like to be able to do it more, and you can't for some reason. Check that out. Ask yourself, what would you like to be doing? You, you, you do do it, but you almost do it. You meant to saying it in this blank way so, you'll, so you can get in touch with it. <coughs> so like, you'd like to do it. You almost can do it, but not quite. And now, uh, a second question is, have you ever had a dream figure who could do it? <laughs> or is there a role model outside who can do it? Might be one or the other. Or the other? Or could be one, could be both, of course, sure. Are you aware of body experiences which are trying to do this thing? <coughs> body feelings inside. Now comes the edge question. What's your reason for not doing it? Why not? Why not do it? Ask yourself, what's your reason?
Do you have people outside or dream figures that are stopping you from doing it? Now, if you want to know more about your body, here's the question around the edge. Go ahead and imagine yourself, look, this is an experiment, so take it like that. Imagine yourself actually doing the thing. And notice the hesitations about doing it, feeling-wise. Notice the, your body, how it reacts. Notice the, the edge inside your body, how it comes up and stops you from doing it. Are there feelings against it? Imagine yourself doing it and feel the reactions in your body about it. Those unprocessed reactions are where, uh, I'm going to just say this as a fact, 95% of your symptoms come from. Symptoms are not complicated. They're very simple. And they're all coming right here at this, in this spot. This unprocessed reaction against that. That's the edge. Put in, I wanted to give you a little experience of it. Put in words, an edge is uh, a reason or a belief system why you can't do something. Reasons. Reasons and experiences. Not, I'm not valuing them. It's neither good nor bad. But there are reasons. And it's going over this edge. On the other side there are these dreams. This is where most of your dreams are, on the other side. And uh, going over the edge, you almost go over and you stop here and instead you develop symptoms. This is how you get, this is where your symptoms are coming from. Almost, almost all of them. There are occasionally some which don't come from the simple thing, but they're very, very rare. And they come from connections to, from the global scene, I think. Some symptoms are connected with the whole global field. Um, I wanted to put that in there, and, uh, the, and this whole work, I mean, there's another way of looking at your development here at the edge, what I call a primary process, this is your identity now, your now identity. I'm the kind of person, for example, sorry, I'm the kind of person who, uh, my identity right now is, I'm the kind of person who's like my father. Uh, this is how I identify myself. And my mother and the whole bear is still over here secondary for me. And all the kinds of things I'd like to do that I'm not doing yet are over here. So this is a second. This is not, it's another identity. The secondary stuff over here. And now comes the the nutshell, and that is that what I'm calling process is this entire thing. It's the primary thing, your identity, the edge that you get to, and the secondary stuff, the deep unconscious material which uh, doesn't belong to your present identity and the whole circling around here. The different psychologies have different ways of looking at that and but what I'm calling process is this entire thing. Now, bringing out the total process. Um, the, uh, let's see, okay, process ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any questions before I, I, I push any other stuff across here? Arnie. Yeah. I don't remember many dreams. Yeah. Just bits and pieces. Yeah. So I'm, and you make, I mean, part of your work makes a, seems to be a large point about the dreams and the dream body. So I'm feeling... Yes, I, I, rel yeah. I, I don't, I'm no longer that fascinated by the dream material itself. And, uh, for me, someone, there's the dreaming process fascinates me. It's the process of dreaming. It's all this secondary material, which seems to be more important. The answer to you is that uh, we can work with the body and with movement and all on your language structure and get down to the same dream material. All roads lead to home. All roads lead to home, and there's thousands of them. All of them are golden roads. 
Well, it's about six. How about meeting at seven thirty over in, in the Huxley. at Huxley, Huxley, and then we're going to do some movement work and and uh, different forms of inner work to to begin with this evening. Enough talk for now. Thank you. See you later. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.